Hi, welcome to Crafting with Kimberly. This month, we're going to make some winter or holiday decorations out of corks. So many different sizes, so many different shapes, all different kinds. Some are plain, some have some fantastic writing on them. So if you drink wine, save your corks. If you don't drink wine, a great place to find them is go to your local liquor store. They do a lot of wine tastings and they have the corks at those. So if you see one coming up, go in ahead of time and ask them if you might be able to be able to keep their corks. Um, other places, definitely your friends. You could also go to bars and see if that they would give you some. You can also purchase them, but I'm all about thrifting. So any way you can get them, go ahead and, and get them. But these are some of the um, ex different kinds that we're going to make. We're going to make a little snowman. Every kind is a different one, depending on the cork. This one I colored in using a chalk marker. I probably would not use a chalk marker again as it does come off pretty easily. I would definitely paint with paint for that one again. This one is a, again a, um, an example of one of the ones that are kind of round on top and then thinner on the bottom. And then we're using a bottle top and another cork on top. So another three different kinds of snowmen. I did a little angel out of one. And of course, what is the holiday time frame and winter time frame if you don't have some reindeer? So as you can see, what a cute um, decoration that was on that cork itself. So I thought, I'm gonna just keep that there. I am not going to paint them. I liked the decorations. And then it's also neat when you have the staining from some of the wine, that gives a neat look too. So this one was a reindeer with twigs. This is a reindeer with toothpicks. You wanna to use something solid. You would not want to use a um, chenille or pipe cleaner for them because these just aren't strong enough. You'd have to put so many of them together to be able to get it to be strong, it just wouldn't be worth it. But you can use these for the antlers. So I suggest getting, going out in your backyard, getting some sticks, the more decorative on top, the better, or kind of straight and solid for the legs. I would not go any thicker than this one. You can kind of see pinky wise. This is even a little bit too thick. Because remember, however thick your stick is, that is the size that you're going to have to make of the hole at the bottom. So that's pretty big. And corks are a little delicate. Um, they do have a tendency to crack up and break on top. So you wanna be really careful when we're gonna be making holes in these. So personally, the thinner the better. I thought this thickness um, was, was just perfect. I thought that was a great thickness for that one. So again, wine corks, bottle caps if you want to make the cute little hats, maybe some chenille sticks if you want to use um, that for antlers. For the angel wings, I just used some string that I had lying around. You use string, you can use yarn. I also, I hate to say this and I have to say my house has now been infected and infested in any other word you want to think of by glitter. I made the mistake of coloring that with glitter. So I'm going to have glitter on everything now. <laughs> it's everywhere. Um, I used some old Mardi Gras beads that I had laying around. They make perfect little Rudolph noses. You can use beads, um, sticks, rocks, uh, rhinestones work well, little rhinestones for that. And then for the scarves, I just had some extra fabric lying around. You don't need a bunch. This was actually from a fleece blanket that I had made. This was the edging from it. And that's a perfect size for a little scarf. If you've watched any of my videos before, or you know me, I don't throw anything away. So something always comes into play to be able to use. Uh, you can use bamboo skewers or you can get some chopsticks. Those will work for the legs as well. 
So I'm going to turn the camera around. Let's get started. All right, let's start by showing how to cut them. You can use them all the same size if you want, or you might want to cut them. I'm just taking a pair of scissors. This is a different type of a cork. It's not your usual cork material, but I found this particular one cut beautifully. And you can see I'm not putting too much effort in being able to cut it. And it gives a really nice, smooth cut. And then what you can do is an X-Acto knife is also very handy because if you didn't cut exactly straight or you had a little bit of a lip or something, you can easily take that and then just slice that away, pull that off, throw it in your waste can. So um, very easy to cut these. You can see with this particular cork, this is more of the traditional cork. You can see that that got very choppy as it cut. But again, if you take your X-Acto knife and just carefully slice down, those pieces slice right off and it's and it makes a nice smooth edge. So an X-Acto knife is very handy. You can cut these as I did for the reindeer heads. I only wanted a small one. You could use the, the whole one if you wanted to. You could have it facing downwards. It's all your particular style. As Bob Ross used to say, you know, this is your world. You live in it. Do what you'd like. But for this, I'm, I'm going to cut them in half. I like the smaller sizes. Let's start out with doing a basic snowman. Again, I said I really like these corks that have somewhat of a rounded top and the bottom. And I can't tell you what any of these are because I was gifted an entire bag of corks. So I had so much fun going through and seeing all the different kinds. So I did not enjoy each of these, <laughs> but I know someone who did. So yay, thank you for gifting them to me. So I'm going to use that, the rounder part, as the bottom. And if it doesn't sit completely right, you can, again, cut and slice down there. I don't mind it if it tips a little because I like these to be whimsical. So I don't want them to be perfect. Again, that's usually with homemade, that's the, the joy of it. I'm going to just set it on the counter and kind of turn it around and see where I want, how I like it, where it's laying right. This seems like it's tipping back a bit, so I'm gonna put that to the back. This seems nice and smooth in front, so this is where my front is going to go. Some of the corks that were gifted in my bag were really neat. Um, this is a Red, Red Newt Cellars, uh, a local winery that had blue corks and I was like that's really cool that looks like a hat to me and I'm going to take just a bottle cap um, off any uh, you can use any kind of sodas or beer bottles after you have your caps especially some of the different colors you know there's blue there's yellow these were really cool they had a white snowflake on top that's what I did with this little guy to me it looked like a little beret so it looked like my little French snowman so for that, all I did was I glued it at a little bit of an angle and just glued that on top of his head. That was really easy to do. So with this one, I'm going to use blue and you just need to decide, do I want an all blue hat? Do I want it to have a different trim? I also have some red. I think I'm going to go with blue and blue. I think I like the idea of blue and blue. This one says cheers. So this was a Sam Adams bottle top. I am just going to put glue right on the top of my cork. And it's a little easier to glue on the cork as opposed to this. Because this is metal, your hot glue gun will get hot, obviously. So just kind of look around and see where 
you want your front and that fits very nicely right in the middle so I'm gonna push that down and make sure that gets a nice a nice top you could use Elmer's glue you could use e6000 glue um, I like a glue gun because it's really fast. And if you make a mistake, you can pull it off and, and fix it pretty easily. So I'm using my hot glue gun. If you do use Elmer's, though, just know that you're going to have to really give it some good drying time. So there, I've just got that glued right on top. So again, I'm going to look around and say, okay, because I picked it up, which way? Do I want that to sit? I want it to sit right like that. Now, I, as I said, I really like this. You could do a plain cork on top and paint it. You could cut the cork to the size that you want. If you want a little bit of a smaller hat, if you like the way that looks a little bit better, so cut your cork there. Um, again, because of the really neat patterns on some of them, that can be your actual pattern. I liked the idea of a really tall top hat. I thought that looked really cool. So now I just need to decide, do I want my little newt going up or do I want my newt crawling down? With this guy, I did had a darker blue and I had it going down. So this time I'm going to go I think I'm going to go up to make it look a little bit different. So for this, I'm going to put glue all around on the bottom of that. Know where my front is and just place that right in there. Hold it down a little bit to get it to set. That's why I like using the hot glue because it sets very quickly. So now you can see he's got a really cute, fun little hat. You could embellish this further. If you went with just a plain cork, paint it, decorate it, put fabric around it. You could take, um, you could take a piece of fabric if you wanted it to have a little brim there. Whatever you want to do, glue snowflakes on, glue beads, anything. I'm just going to leave that one plain. I'm going very basic with some of these. Now I'm going to take some of this material that I had. I'm gonna measure it and see. I'm gonna give it a, a little bit of a snip. I want a, a little bit more finished edge. That was a little ratty from hanging around. And I'm just going to measure, put it around bring it down. I decided I think I want it to go there, so I'm not measuring at all, as you can see. I'm just seeing which way I want that to go. And you can have that go any which way you'd like. I'm just going to follow it around that way. You could have it coming in the middle. You could have a jaunty little snowman and have it going off the side, whatever, whatever you'd like. I kind of like it on the side, so that's what I'm going to do. This wants to roll inward this way, but I kind of want it to roll. I don't know if I can get it to roll the other way. As you can see, it was just the edge. Nope. It wants, it wants to go in this way, so this is the way we're going to do it. So I do not need to glue it all the way around because it's it's going to stay. So I'm just going to bring it here and flip it the way I want it. Do I want that red up or do I want the red hanging down and that going over it? I think I like that. So. I'm going to be mindful of where my center is. I'm going to open that up. I'm going to put just a tiny little line of hot glue. I'm going to bring that up and that down. I'm going to put a little tiny bit of glue 
now coming across. Bring that down. So now I have my scarf. So now cute little scarf hanging around. Again, you can embellish it if you want. If you want fringe, just take your scissors and carefully snip. I'm not going to be moving him around an awful lot, so I don't have to worry about this really fraying. I'm not going to be. I'm not going to be touching it a lot once I have it there. So then, just a couple little, a couple little snips, and now I have. Now I have fringe on my scarf. Just a cute little guide. You can see how quickly these come together. You could use beads for the eyes. I'm just going to take a black Sharpie and decide where I want to put an eye. I want one right there. I'm going to put two eyes close together. You can make them as big or as small as you like. I like, I kind of think the, the smaller the dot, um, more whimsical they look. I'm now going to take an orange Sharpie and I'm going to draw kind of like a C, draw a little C and then from the C make a big long triangle. I'm going to color that in and that's an easy way to make a nose. A C and then kind of a curved triangle and fill that in. You can give him a mouth or not give him a mouth. If he has a scarf right up there, I kind of like that. It's it's like it's cold. So I'm not gonna give him a mouth for this one. I think that one is really cute. Look how fast that was. But adorable, really fun. So snowmen, all sorts of different sizes. Again, with this one, this had kind of a rounded edge and then went up and then I took another piece of cork, like one of the ones that I cut and I glued that on top of it and then colored it all in. Again, I would paint. I gave this one buttons. This already had, the top was already glued to the cork. So that was already the size. I cut a little bit off at the bottom because I wanted it a little shorter, but that already had the hat on it. So I'm going to keep keep that one as it is. And then gave him a face. He does have a smiley face with just some buttons. So really fun with that one. Now let's make a reindeer. I'm going to use this one. This one says toasted head. I think that's kind of fun. I like looking at them and seeing if they have words on them or the different patterns. And that really kind of gives a fun look to, to the reindeer. So I kind of like this one. It said toasted head. So I'm going to use that as its body. And I'm not planning on coloring that. So that's going to be my body. What I'm going to do is I'm going to tip my body upside down and bring it kind of lengthways towards me. You can use almost anything to try to make the holes. You can use your scissors. You can use a screwdriver. I happen to have these um, really long needle nose pliers that had a really nice sharp kind of pointy edge to it. I found this worked really well for me. So I'm going to look at this and I'm going to decide where do I want to put my holes. You don't want to go right to the edge because if you go if you go right directly to the edge, you have a good chance of going out the other side when you're doing your hole, cracking it around here. So you do want to go in a little bit. And you can see on this one, I did probably quarter of an inch in, quarter of an inch in. So from your edge, I wouldn't go any closer than a quarter of an inch. So I'm just going to eyeball that. So I'm going to put my plier in there. I'm going to just stick it in. You can see how easily it sticks in. 
and I'm just going to wiggle it around and I'm going to try to make that hole just a little bit bigger. So you can see I'm just I'm just wiggling and that's kind of a nice size hole. I don't know if my sticks will fit yet. I may have to make them bigger. But for now, you can see that's a nice hole. I'm going to do one a little bit over, but kind of next to it. Do the same thing. Just get it in there. I like the need these needle nose pliers because I could go in and it had a point to get it in there quickly. And then it allows me to roll it around like this, make it bigger. I'm going to do the same thing. It is much easier to do your legs immediately before you do anything else because you can see I've got my whole hand on here being able to twist around move it around and if I had glued my head in on first I would have to be very careful so it is much easier to get these legs in first now there's a couple different things that you can use for legs um, I had mentioned that I use toothpicks. As you can see for this one, I did toothpicks as the legs. I also did a toothpick for the tail and I did the toothpick for the antlers, glued them together and then I just colored them with a brown Sharpie. If you want to use toothpicks, you can do a couple different things. With this particular one, I wanted a thicker leg, so I glued three toothpicks together. So I just took my hot glue, and you can see I'm just gonna go draw a very, very, very thin line of glue. Again, use the tool, use the tip of your glue gun. It's a great way to smooth things out and not burn your fingers. And now I'm going to set one toothpick on top and I'm going to set another toothpick on top that way. And then you can smooth out the glue. So this gives you this gives you a longer leg. Now, you then have to look at the size of your holes and the size of your cork. I kept the pointy part, but then I decided I'm going to need to cut that because it would have been it would have been too long. So, I even think that that's still a little bit too long. So, I'm going to take my scissors and I'm gonna cut to give it a nice flat base. That's what the legs will stand on. So now that I've done that on one side, I can measure, put my other toothpicks that I just made, put that down, give it a cut. So now I have two legs that are the same size. And by using the toothpicks, keeping the pointed edge, that's going to go up into the holes that I just made very nicely. Oh, as you can see by cutting it, it did have one of those come off. So no problems, no worries. Just gonna put a little bit more glue on there. Make sure I do my pointy edge going where the other one is. and attach that in. This glue, every glue stick is different. And I just bought some new ones and these seem to dry really quickly. Especially when you're using just little amounts. But I think that's gonna be all right. So I have two there, two there. I am going to do the same Let's see if it's better. Basically, that was just in half. So let's cut two of those. And then I'm going to take another one. Line that up. Cut that in half. Two of those. Careful when you're cutting so they don't go flying all over. 
and again with glue strings everywhere <laughs> but we're going to take our glue gun do a thin line place a toothpick and see if I can get that in there before it dries and place another toothpick kind of squeeze them together and I have another set of legs and doing the same thing those are a bit small so I'm going to measure again so that's a good size that was a little smaller as you can see I picked up a piece that wasn't quite exactly right I don't like that piece so if it's going to let me take it off, I just was able to pull that right off. So now I'm going to take another toothpick and measure exactly so I know I do have, and then you can even just pull that off right with your finger. I like to always show little bitty mistakes as, as I go along. So in case you do this at home, and you run across this, you know how to fix it. Everything is fixable. I've always said there are no mistakes in crafting, just creative opportunities. So everything can be fixed. So just smooth that out. So now I have three legs and I need one more. Those are all a bit too small. So I'm just gonna take two more, two more to make sure that I have the right size, I'm lining them up here. I'll use those for antlers. Take my other one, put it together, pull it off. So again, don't throw those little pieces away. Those will make great antlers. And if you want to, again, if you want to do just a single toothpick, you can. I just wanted to show how to do a thicker leg. And then I'm gonna just smooth it so I don't have globs globs of glue sticking out. Another trick, if you do have a big glob of glue that you don't like, remember, use your tip. Use the tip of the glue gun. You can go right over it and smooth it out. That'll smooth everything together. So now I'm going to take my hole. I'm going to put a little dot of glue and we're just going to take the pointy edge and push that in. The pointy part will hold it in there and the glue will completely stick it together. So again, my little hole of glue, my pointy edge, just gonna Smooth it around. There's that. You can also take a piece of toothpick that you had left over if you want to smooth it around the side just to make it look nice. You can do that. And those come right off, the little glue balls. So that's a way to smooth it down. I don't think anybody's going to really be looking at the underneath of this, so I'm not too worried about it. I'm going to put another dab of glue, take my other set of legs, push that in, spin it around, take that extra piece, smooth that around, kind of clean that up, and then my final glue dot, taking my sticks, putting them in, twisting, spinning, taking my stick, 
going around, cleaning, cleaning that up. So now I have the reindeer legs. If it is not standing the way you want it to stand, you can then go back and cut them. And if they come apart, like you can see this little guy's coming apart a little bit. I'm going to put just a little bit more glue there. Squeeze it down. Squeeze it and hold it down. While I'm holding it, I'm going to take my toothpick again and just smooth that out. And then now it's cool enough to the touch where I can just really hold it and squeeze it together. So this one, I think I just pushed it up a little bit too much. So you can see it's just not really standing completely straight. So what I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to trim this a bit because this one seems a little bit long. So I'll just do little bits at a time. There we go, that got him down. So that is your little reindeer with thicker legs if you wanted to give the thickness. You would do the exact same thing if you had sticks. So you would just see your, take your cork, decide where you wanted it to go, how long you wanted, cut it in, and then push it up into the hole. So sticks, you have to be a little bit careful with though. Sometimes, you know, obviously most of the times when sticks fall down, it's because the tree is dead and you have the branches unless you've pruned them yourself. So they can be really breakable. If, if the tree branch had died, sometimes these little edges are really thin and breakable. So just be very careful when you're looking at, at your sticks and also be, be on the watch for bugs. So here is my body. I now need to decide, do I want the words going this way and have the head here? Do I want the words kind of going there and having my head here? I'm going to place him on the ground right here. I think I'm going to have it where the words are going this way. So I would like this to be my front. Now, what you can do is, as I said, we've we've cut some of these. You could either have a full head, as you can see, going down this way. It could be a full, long snout and a bigger head. You could put the eyes up here and the nose here. That gives a different look. Or with one of the ones that you've cut, you could put just a tiny little head on there. I'm going to take one and I am going to cut it. I'm going to cut a different head. I wanted to kind of keep the brown because I'm not going to paint these. I wanted to keep them kind of the same color family. It's a different, it's a different um, cork, but I just want to keep it in the same color family. But if you're going to paint them, you can see where it doesn't really matter. Or if you really like the way that pattern looks, as you can see, that's kind of a neat pattern of one, you can give it a pattern head. So again, it's your choice of what you would like to do. I'm going to cut this. So I'm going to take, again, just to show you how easy it is to do, I'm going to make it a little bit longer than I, instead of cutting it in half, I think there's a little fleur de lis on here. So this gives you an example of by cutting it, you can see it's a little jaggedy edge. That's where the X-Acto knife comes in handy. So I can just, using a sawing motion, 
careful of your work surface, but I can easily take that part off and give it a nice smooth surface. So now you need to decide where where you want this. This has this has some words on it. So do I want them going this way, that way? I think I'm going to put the floor de lis up on top and and have the head going this way. So now you need to decide, do you want your antlers coming from the back? As you can see, I just glued toothpicks and then glued it to the back. So that's what he looks like from the front. That's what he looks like. I should say she because um, female, ant female reindeer keep their antlers on during the winter, whereas the males get rid of them. So anytime you see a reindeer and it has antlers, it's a girl. And you can also see with this one, I went part way in. You can see it's a little bit of a bigger head. And I kept the back plain and went in about a quarter of an inch from the top. So with this, I think I'm going to, I'll show you how to go a quarter inch from the top. So let's go here. I'm going to take, I want to try to keep that fleur de lis pattern. So I'm just going to make my hole on both sides of that cork. Just be very careful with this part so you don't come out the back or you don't hurt yourself. Now this one is going to need to be a little bit of a bigger hole, so I'm going to close those up. So it will give me a wider, let's see if I can get that in there a little bit more. So for this, I'm going to show you two different ways we can do it. I found these really pretty kind of goldy, rose-colored gold copper uh, chenille sticks at the Dollar Tree. So I'm going to cut that in half. And then... I'm going to put a little end in and see how high, how high do I want those to go? Let's, again, me not really measuring. I'm going to just bend that in half to save me from having to measure the other one. Line those up, cut it, and cut it in half. So now I have two base pieces that are the same size. Those will be my base. I am then going to take the other piece, measure that one, cut that off. So I have my base. I have the other piece. I'm going to put it together like a cross, wrap one side going that way, wrap the other side going this way, just to connect it. And now you can, because this is the chenille stick, you can bend it, you can move it out, you can have it going up, you can curl them, you can do whatever you want. You could raise it up. I think I like that shape. The same thing. I'm going to take, whoop, drop it on the floor first. <laughs> I am going, once I pick it up, I am going to take, all right, now this one just, I guess, doesn't want to be made. It keeps dropping on me. <laughs> I'm going to now remember which piece that I had as my base. So this is my base. I'm going to take that piece, hold it together, bring one side this way, bring the other side that way, twist it around just to connect them. Bring them up and around. So now I have another one. If I were going to take twigs, 
I would find a piece that I liked that already has the little things there. And then I could easily go right into my hole with the twigs. Those are the very tippy tops. So now I'm gonna do the exact same thing. I'm gonna put my little dot of glue, take my chenille stick and place it in the hole. Push it down, smooth that little glue dot away and I have one connected. I'm gonna do the same thing. Little dot of glue. Take it and put it in the hole. Take off the strings. There's always strings. And then now the nice thing with the chenille is you can really bend it around. But look how cute that looks. And that will go there. I think I would like to give it a red nose again. I really like the red noses on the reindeers. Reindeer. <laughs> I'm going to just take those Mardi Gras, Mardi Gras beads, go right up to the very tip of that, because this is they're all connected with string and glued in there. Trim off. Trim off that other piece so you can see I now have a little bead that I can put there. Again, too, if you wanted to use rhinestones, you could use rhinestones for eyes, beads for eyes, rhinestones for noses. I've got a whole selection in here. A, rhin a rhinestone would also look really cute to give it a bit of sparkle. In fact, I think I may change my mind instead of doing a bead since that one, those two already have beads. Let's do something different. I think I will use the red rhinestone to be a nose. So I'm going to put that pretty much do a dot right in the center. And I'm going to plop the little rhinestone down. And again, if you have any glue sticking out, these toothpicks make a great tool to just smooth it around. So now you have a shiny little rhinestone nose. So this really opens up a ton of possibilities. I mean, you can go as big as you want with the rhinestones of what you want to decorate with. And I can try to put these in a bag right now. So I'm just going to pour these over here. Get those out of the way. A little heart. And this is a little sequin that was in that bag. So look how cute that would look as either a nose or eyes. You can do whatever you want. I happen to love googly eyes. I think googly eyes makes the world a very happy place. If you're feeling down in the dumps... Take, get a pair of googly eyes, put some on your plants, put it on your wastebasket, put them in funny, out-of-the-way places, and you would be surprised how much a googly eye will bring you a little bit of, of laughter. So I'm going to put a little dot right there. Pick up an eye. I'm going to glue it there, and I'm going to glue it sticking up a little bit. I like the 3D look of it. Same thing. I like to put them close together because that gives a fun look. And now look how fun that looks. But again, you can use a bead with this little guy. I just drew them on with a Sharpie. So use what you have or go out and get some googly eyes. <laughs> So there is that. I'm not going to give him a mouth. I just like the, the eyes and the nose. So now my words were going this way. I want my head here just to decide where I want it to go. I'm going to go right down. 
part way with my glue. Set my head on there. Just hold it for a little bit. Get them on there. And now, I did this one on purpose so you could see again. Like I said, I like to show you the mistakes. So now that I have my head on there, oh, he's not going to stay, is it? Because if you look at the feet, they weren't all exactly the same. This one, I can't really show you up close, but this one doesn't go down as far as the others. So I could either try to take that out, which is going to be hard, or I can just take my scissors, hold them together, give a little bit of a trim, set it down. Still not right, I have to go to the back. Hold them together, give a trim, make them even, the trim so now you can see by trimming now he sit now he sits upright so you may have that you may have that problem even though you evenly put them in maybe as if you pushed up I think I pushed up a little bit too far and that's why they weren't even but it really is easy to fix I think he needs a little tail I'm going to use the same material as I did with that so I'm just I had this left over so I think I'm just going to fold it in half and then maybe fold it in half again so it's a little bit thicker and I think I'm going to take one of the little edges just kind of bring it around smooth it together just so it's really pushed together so it's kind of like it's just like a loop. So I'm going to go right in the middle. I don't need to do a hole. You could put a hole there, or if you had a cork from opening it um, that already has the hole in it from the corkscrew, you could stick it right in there. This one did not. So I'm just going to add that right like that. So look how cute he turned out. If you want to, her, <laughs> if you want to give a little coat, you could put some fabric on there. If you wanted to do a scarf, you could put a scarf on there. If you had some snowflake sequins, you can do whatever you want. But look how cute and easy and how quickly that came together. Cute little reindeer. For the angel, I'm going to show you, I just used one full cork and I cut part of the cork. I then had some twine. You can use twine. You can use ribbon. This was left over from another project. So I'm not even measuring this because it was already left over from another project. I don't feel like cutting it. So I'm going to leave a little bit down as a tail. I'm going to just spread my fingers wide and I'm just going to roll around my hand. And then I have another edge there. So I have one end hanging there, one end hanging there. I'm going to just tie it, go into the middle. So there's one and two. I am not going to try to tie it with these strings. I'm going to take another string and tie it around. I found that was a bit easier to do. If you want to just, you know, take, tie it with those other strings there, you can. I liked having four pieces hanging down. So I just wrap that around the center. I'm going to tie a knot. 
the string was long enough where now I can do a little bow as well. Pull that together. So I have a little bow. I have the pieces that are hanging down. Move that little guy down there. It just gives it an extra fancy little bit to have all those extra cords hanging down. And then I'm just going to take these, pull them, pull them out a bit, fan them out, and you have instant angel wings. If you did not want a bow, just tie it in a knot and then just have it facing that way. So if you don't want your little bow to show, and then you would just glue it right up at the top and then glue your head either either side that you wanted if you have to straighten it you can this the angel that i made had a really cool star at the top so that's why i chose that as the head you could paint one on if you wanted and i had from when i was straightening one of my corks all I did was I took my exacto knife and I cut a very thin that was actually just a leftover piece but if you don't have any leftover pieces go around in a circle very carefully cuz these exacto knives are extremely sharp and these can slip so you just want to really go very slowly going around. I am not trying to cut through the entire thing at once. I did my circle, so now I can go a little bit further in to get that off, just going around in a circle. And now I have a disc. So that can be, um, I don't know what head. I'll just, I'll just put that there. For right now if that was going to be my head and then what I did with that one is I took a yellow sharpie I colored it and again made the mistake of doing glitter <laughs> glitters everywhere and I glittered it and then I just kind of glued it at a little angle like that so it was the halo standing up if you wanted to you could also put the top of a toothpick in the center of the cork like that and you could glue you could glue your halo to the top of that smaller obviously but that would be a way to do it too but this was this was a little easier way you could add yarn for hair I just liked the. I, I really wanted to do the country look, the very simplistic look of just the string. Again, you can use yarn, you can use embroidery floss, you could use fabric, you could use a, a, the burlap ribbon and do that. You could use the chenille sticks and do circles, kind of anything you wanted. I just drew just a simple, simple little face on there. So just simple and basic. And you can also do almost anything you can think of, any kind of shapes and sizes, um, all the different corks. Look at the cork. What does it say to you? What do you see in it? You can make dogs. You can make birdhouses. You can take just the cork, take decorative ribbon, I mean, uh, wire, ribbon or wire, wire down, hang some beads from it, put a ribbon up at the top to hang it on your tree. Or I'm using all of mine as table decorations. I don't want to put them on the tree. But if you did want to add something to put it on the tree, you can tie a ribbon or, or hot glue a ribbon and have it hang wherever you'd like. But so many different things. I've seen birdhouses, little tiny mini miniature birdhouses out of them. Um, again, just the ornaments with beads hanging off of them. You could do book pages. Um, any kind of decoration you can think of. And any animal 
you can think of or little people. So the sky's the limit when, when you're making these. So I hope you have fun. I hope you have some really uh, fun decorations to decorate your house with and enjoy the winter holiday season. It's very cold here in New York, so burr. <laughs> but I like my snowmen this way. I don't really, I love them outside to see, but I'd, I'd much prefer the nice warm snowmen in here. So thank you so much for crafting with me again. Again, Crafting with Kimberly. I'm Kimberly Canale, and I hope you have a great time. Thanks.